Welcome back. In this second video on population modeling, I'm going to dive into this, what's often considered the simplest possible model for population dynamics. So uh, when I introduced basic population notation, I said that one of the things we're very often interested in is the per capita growth rate, the growth rate, DNDT, uh, divided by n, so we're expressing growth on a per individual basis. Um, and so the simplest possible uh, dynamic population model would be to assume that that per capita growth rate is constant. Um, so if we say change in population size is a function is births minus deaths, b minus d, and if both of those things are constant, uh, then we just have a, a we're going to combine b minus d into a per over one overall parameter r, which is our net population growth rate. And so if our simplest possible model per capita growth rate is constant, I'll multiply both sides by n that so we get this differential equation dn dt equals that per capita growth rate r times n, the population size. So if we graph this, it's pretty simple. Per capita growth rate, dndt over n, as a function of n, is just a flat line. Uh, actually, this is a good point, point to, for me to mention that uh, all of the lecture slides that I'm showing here are actually generated by our markdown. And so all of the code that I'm going to use to generate all these population model plots that we're going to see over the next few slides are all available on that R markdown file. Okay, so this simple population model actually has an analytical solution. So if we say dndt over n is some constant r, we could take, we can move the dt to the other side, so multiply both sides by dt, and then we can take the integral of both sides. Quick point, this is just for illustration purposes. I'm not gonna ask anyone to actually derive this analytical derivation that you probably came across it in intro calc. Uh, so if I take the integral of both sides, uh, we'll start on the, the uh, integral of a constant. Uh, that's just going to be uh, that constant times what we're integrating over time dt uh, plus some integration constant c that we don't know yet. And the integral of one over n is going to be log of n. And for no other reason that if we remember that the derivative of log of n equals one over n. So we're just undoing that. Uh, the integral is just undoing that derivative. And the, we're, you know, there's integration constant here, but we're just combining it with that integration constant over there for one constant. Uh, if we exponentiate both sides to get n by itself, the exponential of the log cancels each other out. Um, so we get n, and we have an exponent of everything on this side. Um, and now if we make the assumption at time, when time equals 0, this is just going to be exponent of c. And we'll define that as uh, n0. And that allows us to write down this uh, equation exactly, saying n as a function of t time is the, si the initial size of the population, and then r times t in the exponent, or r is that population growth rate. And this is what uh, this model typically looks like for a positive growth rate, which is this pattern of exponential growth. Uh, so the, if the population is growing on a per capita basis, a constant per capita basis, it's going to not only increase, but it's going to kind of accelerate uh, because as the population grows, the per capita, there's more individuals each generation to increase. So we get this compounding effect, um, very much like compounding interest. We get a compounding effect of uh, the population size on the, the absolute population growth rate. The per capita growth rate is still constant, but since the population is larger, the growth in an absolute size keeps getting larger and larger. So 
uh, what I'm going to do now is, is take this differential equation model and write it down uh, as an equivalent discrete time model. Uh, I'm going to do that, one, to show you that you can do that, and two, because in most practical basis basis, uh, we're going to end up using our, you know, some other computer language to simulate population models. And uh, it's ultimately going to be easier for us to be able to express those models in discrete time because computers can't actually, um, you know, we're not asking the computer to solve the differential equation model for us. We're going to ask the model to just do this iterative process of predicting the next time point as a function of the current time point. So the equivalent discrete time model can be rendered in as n at time t plus 1 is some growth rate times n of t. Uh, we're going to note that this big R growth rate here is not e equal to the little r per capita growth rate, but they are directly related to each other. So n, if we uh, just do a little bit of math, if n of at time 1 in the discrete time model is equivalent to n at time 1 in, in the continuous time model, on the discrete time model, that's just r times n at time 0. In the continuous time model, that's n 0 exponent to the r, r times 1, because time equals 1. The n 0 cancels out, and we see that uh, the big r is just the exponent of the little r. Same concept, just expressed on, on different units in the, in the discrete time. <clears throat> and so uh, why model populations discreetly? Uh, I kind of talked about the analytical uh, version of that. Uh, by simulating processes uh, numerically, we avoid needing to solve for them in terms of analytical solutions. So we avoid that need to do integrals, which ultimately isn't just a, a matter of mathematical, of computational convenience, uh, but it's not hard to write down models that are sufficient, sufficiently complicated describe a population that, that doing that integral becomes very hard to impossible. Um, by contrast, when we're working with kind of discrete time, it becomes much easier to write down these models and add more realism to them. It's also worth noting that in reality, when we talk about these birth death processes, that many populations have discrete generations. And so modeling them in discrete time actually makes sense conceptually. Um, you think about, you know, a lot of uh, a lot of organisms have a, a specific reproductive season. Cool, and this is this figure just shows uh, that we can define the discrete and continuous time models so that they really are equivalent. And this is just showing a little bit of our code uh, to show that how we actually go about doing this iterative modeling. So I showed earlier when we just defined a discrete time model that um, what you end up doing is taking the result from one time point uh, and plugging it into the next, because we're writing in a model that says n of t plus 1 is r times n of t. And uh, when t equals 1, you know we have some initial condition to predict time equals 2. But then to predict time equals 3, we just use uh, we use the time, the solution we got when we got when we use time equals one. So we always predict one step in the future, and then we go to when we go to make the prediction of the next time step. You know, the little t here is one bigger, and we just keep plugging in. So we we have this iterative algorithm where we take the results from one time point, and then when the time advances, that becomes the input to the model instead of the output, and we keep feeding the output of the model back in as its own input as time advances. And this is really simple to do with a basic for loop. Cool. And then this figure here shows what both this discrete and continuous time model looks like on a log scale. So I've, I've logged the y axis here. Um, so it's exponential growth on a linear scale. That exponential growth on a log scale is just uh, 
a straight line. So actually one of the things we'll want to take away from this is that if we look at something on a log scale and it appears to be a straight line, that implies that it's some sort of exponential process, this feeding back on itself. Um, Cool. That's going to be a handy thing to, to know when we look at some actual uh, more complicated models or, or dive into some other analyses. Uh, and this figure shows what happens if we plug in a negative growth rate. And so, so instead of a population growing exponentially, it will decline exponentially towards zero. Um, it's just kind of the mirror image. So knowing if that R zero, that R is positive or negative is actually a really important thing to know about a population. So a population with a, a net growth rate of zero is going to stay the same. With a positive growth rate, it'll increase. A negative growth rate will decline. Um, and that, that ability to understand that R and, and you know not only to understanding R, but the uncertainty around R is, is really important for any sort of species management, particularly with regard to endangered species. And uh, it's the sort of thing that, that um, Folks that work in endangered species will find themselves going to court over, you know, what what is the actual value of R, and how does that affect uh, kind of management decisions that that follow from that. And again, on a log scale, uh, that exponentially decline just like looks like a linear decline on a log scale. Straight line implies exponential. Okay, so some quick take home messages. First, constant per capita growth rate predicts uh, exponential growth or decline. Uh, whenever a population growth rate is positive, so that's little r bigger than zero or big r bigger than one, the population will increase. Uh, the population will decline if the growth rate is negative, little r uh, less than zero, and the equivalent for big r is big r being less than one. And that makes sense for the big r, because if we take a number and multiply it by a number less than one, uh, between zero and one, really, um, the the popul you know the the value will get smaller and it'll just keep getting smaller and smaller. Uh, we can model populations in either continuous or discrete time, uh, and these discrete time models can be easily simulated. You know, so instead of having to solve them analytically, though there are ways to solve them analytically, um, we can easily solve them uh, numerically by just setting up a for loop. And again, that straight lines on a log scale uh, imply an exponential growth or decline in a linear scale. Cool. That's going to wrap up our simplest model. In the next video, I'm going to kind of move on to uh, how to relax some of the assumptions of this simple model.